Hey, what's up? I'm Lombardo Boyar, Jose from Big Ass Spider, and you're watching Back to the Movies with Sean Evans. On the show we have Lombardo Boyer who plays Jose in the Mike Mendez film Big Ass Spider. How are you today Lombardo? I am doing great. It's early but I have a baby so I'm up. You know, that's how yeah. it goes. Yeah, exactly. Baby keeping you up. I understand completely. But thanks for joining us at such an early time nonetheless. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. No problem. So firstly, Big Ass Spider. I mean, it's really taken over as a cult classic. I mean, it's leaving the likes of Sharknado, like, caught in its web. I mean, did you ever think that the film would take off as well as it has done? Yeah, you know, you, you know, whenever you work on anything as an actor, I think you hope, you know, and, and you dream that it could become something good. But um, I think when, I, when me and Greg decided to do this, he brought me on board. Can you still see me? Yeah, yeah I still see you, yeah. All right. So, so my screen went black and I freaked out. Here we go. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So when we decided to do it, I think that's what we. Uh, if we were gonna do a big spider movie, we we wanted it to be good. So, we tried to make it as good as we could. You know, because all me and Greg can do was just do the acting part. After that, I mean, literally, it's in Mike Mendes's and the special effects people's hands. You know. <laughs> yeah. You know, so we did our scenes and then we kind of just left it up to them. And then we even had a moment on set where we were watching uh, Mike Mendez tell some of the extras to die in the park scene, right? And me and Greg are there and he's pointing at an extra. He's like, die, die, die. <laughs> and he's like, no, faster, faster. <laughs> and, you know, there's nothing there. And me and Greg just kind of had that moment like our, 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 our careers are over, man. <laughs> Because you know you don't know what's gonna happen, you know. After you just gotta trust Mike, and he did a great job. And yeah, we turned a, a little film into something uh, pretty cool, I think. Yeah, definitely a cult classic. I mean, with you saying there that Greg kind of introduced you into the movie, is that how you kind of got the role as Jose in the movie? Was it because oh, of Greg? Oh, definitely. Yeah, Greg is. Uh, we've been friends for years now. Probably, I want to say seventeen years, maybe eighteen. And um, he's always been a, a real big supporter of mine, and I even call him, I make jokes and call him my personal manager, because <laughs> uh, he had hired me on another movie that he produced and Le uh, Larry Trilling directed called Group Sex, and that was about Sexaholics Anonymous, and he just gave me a role in that as well. So I'm coming home one day, and I'm driving up, and I don't think I was working at the time either. I, I don't remember being too happy. <laughs> And I get this, I get this frantic call, and it's Greg, and he's like, "Hey, man, I'm sitting here with this director, Mike Mendez, and we're gonna do this big Spider movie, and I want you to be my sidekick." And I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, slow down!" <laughs> he's like, yeah, "How about good morning?" And you know, but he, uh, I read the script. He told me about it, and the one thing I can say as an actor, for me, anyways, is uh, I've always felt like if things are meant to, meant to be mine, everything I've done. Even the stuff I haven't gotten, I, I can let go and say, no, you know, that, that wasn't for me. And um, it felt, as soon as I read the script, and I mean, I had to do it, and it just felt like it was my role. And so I always kind of go with my gut feeling. And then once uh, he talked Mike Mendez into offering me the part, because I challenged Greg, he's like, I was like, I'm not going to read it. It's like, if you want me to be in it, get me the role. <laughs> So he did, and Mike Mendes's only question was, "Does he have a mustache?" And uh, and I happened to have a mustache at the time, so it worked out. <laughs> fantastic! Yeah, the mustache always helps. It's nice to know that a mustache actually got you that part as well. So that's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, it's clear to see from the film. I mean, before you even told me that you'd known uh, Greg for a long time, you can tell straight away on screen that you've known each other a long time purely because of the chemistry. There's no amount of acting talent that amasses to the amount of chemistry that you guys had on screen in terms of the comedic value and balancing it with the horror stuff as well. I mean, um, did you guys work on that chemistry together as like an addition for the film or is it just a natural thing between you two since you've yeah. known each other? Yeah, we just know each other. He's like just one of those friends that even if you don't see each other for a while, as soon as you get back together, it's just bam, right back in it. You know, it's like you never uh, were apart. So he's a great guy. And also it helps when you're shooting a low budget movie and you're sharing a honey wagon trailer. 
It's really cool. <laughs> I'm sure you got some interesting stories about that one. I'm sure. Yeah, it was good. It got noisy. Let's say that. Uh, <laughs> No, we just, uh, you know, we had a little divider thing, but we're, we, 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 you know, we're so cool with each other. We just opened it and we talked about the scenes, you know, ahead of time. And we would all, always usually have a blueprint to what we wanted to do. And then uh, luckily, that's the good thing about a low budget film is, you know, we didn't have any studio execs or any or, you know, 20 producers on set going, oh, I don't like that. No, don't do this. So you know we had a free license to just play with the scenes and do whatever we want and and, and I hope Gregory doesn't mind the writer <laughs> I haven't really asked him if, what he thought about everything we changed but I would say I, 90 percent of what I what I said in the movie was improvised or, or we changed it yeah I was just about to ask that in a future question thanks for that straight away I was oh, thinking with yeah, that let you in baby I was gonna say it's either an extremely talented writer or there's some improvisation going on there I think it's a mix of both to be honest yeah definitely I mean he he definitely gave us a good blueprint to work off of and then uh, and then for me it was more what I what I realized about Jose is like I wanted him to kind of to to comment for the audience you know what I mean? As yeah. if watching this movie, and that's something that I I kind of wanted to add. You know, like what did what you know? Because especially when uh, uh, what's his face is speaking the scientist, and, and you know, it's just come on, man, speed it up. You know, and that was all stuff that just came out in in how how would the audience be feeling during this? You know what I mean? Like shut up, speed it up, just tell yeah, me what's talk, going. Yeah, to make some sense. Yeah, you're talking too much scientific <laughs> nonsense just to right. speak the truth. Yeah. No, I mean, with the film, obviously there was never a big ass spider running around the place. I mean, that would have been awesome, but nevertheless, special effects filled in the gaps and they did a great job. I mean, how do you manage to interact with something that you cannot see? I mean, how hard is it as an actor to do that? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, at a certain point, you just got to trust Mike Mendes, you know what I mean? And you just have to jump in, you know what I mean? Because, uh, yeah, if you try to get too analytical about what's going on you know there are some actors that are like no it's okay so what size is it it's like okay so it's big all right it's coming after us all right go <laughs> you know and like i said you have to trust your director and you know and hey was that too much you know is it not um and really had to trust them because a lot because we shot this in 17 days i believe total so we had maybe you know a lot of times one or two takes at things so you really had to trust mike and just say okay let's just go for it <laughs> Okay, fantastic. It definitely sounds like, um, I mean, they always say like with independent films, it's like working with family. I mean, even if you've never met them before, everyone seems to collaborate together uh, as a collective and everyone seems to get on well with one another. There's never many problems as though you'd be in a studio film and things are going wrong or the budget, so you're doing 20 takes. Or <laughs> so Is it like working with family? Do you agree with that comment? Or? Oh. Oh, I would totally agree with that. I mean, because it's kind of like you're be, you're like you're in the trenches, like being grunts, you know. And when you're working that hard and and you're working for for really, you're working to to just kind of keep the thing going, keep it alive. And I think, um, I mean, I have been in smaller budget movies that don't go as well. But I think when you get a group that really believes in the project and is there because, and of course, the horror community is awesome. I mean, you know, they're just and everybody. I've had I've made so many friends because of this movie, and you know, you included. You know what I mean? So it's just, yeah. So it's amazing to me, you know. And it's it's it is like a, when you do a project like this where everyone just really believes in it, then yeah, you have a great experience. And I'm still friends with everybody, you know. Yeah, that's definitely great to hear. I mean, imagine if you were sitting here now, you're talking to me, and there's noises outside. But you don't know what's going on. You climb up to your window, peer open the curtain, and suddenly there's a big ass spider tearing through your neighborhood. I mean, what steps would you take? Would you act like Jose, or would you just be running like hell with your wife and kid? I'd probably be running like hell with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, she's pregnant too. I mean, my my yeah, I would say my fatherly instincts would probably kick in first. But if you know, if they were in danger of the spider, then I'd have to man up. You know? Yeah, shit would go down. It's, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Totally understand. Now, but I first, I try to get him to safety. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Definitely a good answer there. I mean, the film for me, personally, is a giant metaphor. I mean, Greg's character, Alec, struggles to speak to women, yet he can fight a huge, big-ass spider, no problem whatsoever, the same as yourself. It's as though the spider is like a metaphor for life, as though as the spider gets bigger, as the film progresses, the sort of message like, um, no matter what life throws at you, rise, rise to the challenge, do bigger, achieve better. Do you feel the same way, or do you have a different perspective on how the film's 
approach. Oh, interesting, or... son. Interesting. That's deep. That yeah. is deep. <laughs> I thought about I never, it this morning. I never I thought about that. Yeah. It's like, wow, you're kind of blowing my mind a little bit. It's like, wow, interesting. Yeah, and if you think about it, I mean, I think we end up better at the journey, and he gets the girl at the end, you know? You know, maybe he had to prove himself or get that confidence in him, you know, to for Carly to finally see it. You know, interesting point. I like it. Yeah, I just liked how the spider grew. So it's like his amb ambition grew, his like passion grew, and his determination grew with it. So the characters kind of evolve as the spider's evolving. So that's kind of what I picked up from the movie anyways. I love it. That's why you do what you do, see? I'm just an actor going, what, what, what do I say? <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, with the film being very upbeat, it's very jokey, it's got the brilliant mix of horror and comedy. Now, I mean, did the comedy continue behind the scenes? And there was, there certain things that you could tell us about that happened on set? Oh, within yeah. Reason, within reason. Like, yeah, yeah. There's like, there was a bunch of, I mean, we, you know, that's the other good thing about when you do a small budget. I mean, it's a blast because you're together all day. You know, you're usually working 12, 14 hour days. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're there on set and there's some downtime. Stuff's going to go bad. But yeah, you have to have fun and have a blast. And one of my favorite things uh, to do during this uh, movie, because, you know, I have the accent. So I like to walk up to people and go, uh, do you cut the cheese? You didn't cut the cheese? <laughs> so I had a lot of fun with that. I would just walk up to people when they weren't expecting me and just go, "Hey, do you cut the <laughs> And they would start laughing. Which is, I don't know. You have that term over there, right? Cutting the cheese. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. I picked it actually. I picked it up from Two and a Half Men. I remember Charlie Sheen singing it on the piano to the, the little kid. He's saying, "Who no cut way. the cheese? Who cut the cheese?" Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. You got to check that out. I'll have to send it to you straight after the interview. It's a great little scene from Two and a Half Men. Oh, that's also yeah. We joked around like a lot, you know. It was fun, and then a lot of times, you know, um, I mean, the production designers did a great job. I mean, sometimes because sometimes they're being with the naked eye looking at some of these sets, you know, you're like, oh, there's no way this is gonna look real. This is ridiculous, <laughs> you know. But then with the little lighting and and smoke and then, I mean, it just some of the stuff turned out great. So we had a lot of fun, kind of making fun of our movie as we were shooting it. And I think it's a testament to Mike Mendez and uh, special effects and everybody that they actually ended up looking great, you know? Like I said, because all we could do was just work on the acting, and that's all we could focus on. You know, after that, it's out of your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely one uh, scene that springs to mind with you mentioning, like, scenery. Definitely in the hospital, when you go down to, into the boiler room, was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that must, I'm, I mean, with you saying there, I mean, I bet yeah. the sets didn't look as good in real life, but you had a bit of movie magic to it, and straight away, it looks dark, it looks ominous, yeah. and, you know, it looks creepy. Yeah, they did a great job. I mean... I've been looking through your IMDb profile. You know, I've got to stalk the people who I'm interviewing before I interview Do them. Exactly. Good. And I your homework. Yeah, exactly. And I've noticed that you've been in a lot of movies. You were in Gone in 60 Seconds. You did. Yeah, but I. Was, but in that movie, I was gone in 60 seconds. <laughs> hey, you were still in there, though, man. I mean, that's all the best. No, I mean, no. If you know, that's a funny story about that movie. I, uh, I had read for a bigger role, and uh, I didn't get the bigger role, obviously. And the casting director called and said, hey, listen, they're shooting a, a scene in San Pedro tomorrow, um, and they need a paramedic. You know, and you have maybe two, three lines, right? A day player. Yeah. And I was like, they're like, do you want it? So they just offered it to me. I was like, sure, I'll do it. So I go down. And if you remember the movie, it's a San Pedro scene where he jumps, right? The bridge. Yeah. It's Is a that big with the Shelby scene. Mustang? Yes. Yeah. And we had so many, there were so many extras there. I mean, it was ridiculous. So by the time I showed up, and I think there was four day players at the time, and uh, I mean, it was it was madness. I mean, the, you know, the first AT screaming. I mean, there's extras that are come, and then he's like, "Where are my four day players?" And the other three just ran at him. Right? They were so excited to do that, and I just kind of sat there and laid back and <laughs> let me see what happens if I don't say anything. <laughs> So they were so hectic that I never said anything. So basically, I was an extra that got paid better because I never told them I was there and they never asked for me. So that's a little secret tip in there. So you'll never see me in the movie. Um, but, it, but I got credited, and so I still get money from it, but I, I was never <laughs> – you know, you'll never see me in it. <laughs> that's like the best day's work ever. I mean, you just sit there and yeah. do your sandwich, maybe a beer, and get paid for yeah. it. Fantastic. Yeah, and it was – I just didn't – you know, not that – I think maybe at the time I was kind of like, oh, this is so below me. I was young and, you know, <laughs> big head and stuff. So it's like, oh, three lines, whatever. Um, 
so I didn't say anything. So, and it's funny though because that's one of the first things that comes up on my IMDb. So people always ask me about it, but you're the first that I've actually explained that whole story to. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I'm I'm really honored that you disclosed that. <laughs> I also saw that you did voiceover work for Happy Feet. I know loads of people must yeah. mention that as well. So we'll oh, skip. We'll it's skip fine. on. It's fine. Yeah, Happy Feet one and two. No, they were great. I mean, you know, kids love it and. And uh, it was my first, uh, I had done a cartoon before that called Rocket Power. And besides that, that's the biggest, you know, voiceover gigs I've gotten. And considering all they do is hire stars now, I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I mean, um, when I, I was in, actually in LA in October, the first time I've ever been to America. And oh, uh, wow. I was in like all the sound stages over at the studios. And the amount of like work that goes into doing the voiceovers, I, I was just thinking it's like a guy with the microphone film playing and you basically just doing little bits, not the whole entire film. I mean, I just, it's unbelievable. All the technology, all the gadgets, the amount of acting that you need to do to portray an animated character. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. So it's a lot of work. Yeah. And the thing too, because they're just recording tape. I mean, you know, you, you think they do a lot of takes in, in, you know, in films. I mean, but in this thing, it's ridiculous because they can just keep recording and recording and recording. Yeah. You know, it goes on and on sometimes. <laughs> that sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. Now, I mean, from the IMDb, I mean, I'm not sure how many people have mentioned this to you because, I mean, it's quite a new film that's coming out this year, Dawn of the Planet yeah. of the Apes. Now, are you playing a big role in this movie or is it a supporting role? I mean... A supporting role. I have, uh, I have uh, some scenes that are very important to the storyline and, uh, and they're, they are with an ape. Uh, and it's, it's... I mean, I'm just really excited to be... A part of the movie and it, the funny thing is you asked earlier about did it help you know acting with nothing there and everything because I had to do uh, Dawn of the Planets which is 3D and CGI and I did have to work with nothing sometimes so I was I was well trained by Big Ass Spider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, well that was my next question I mean do you think the success of Big Ass Spider has led to you landing the role in Dawn of the Planet to the Apes? I mean, you're trained to run away from nothing, so, I mean, you can run away in a forest now with crazy apes chasing after you, no problem. Yeah, exactly right. No, it's funny, I, I didn't know this, but of course, Greg Grunberg, by the way, knows everybody. He's like one of the nicest guys in Hollywood, and he literally knows everybody. And uh, one of his childhood friends, since they were three, was J.J. Abrams. And his other good friend is Matt Reeves, right. which, which I didn't know. So we're, we're doing an interview for Big Ass Spider, I think, two weeks ago. And somebody says, and Lombardo, you're in Dawn and Planet of the Apes. And Greg goes, you work with Matt? <laughs> and I go, yes. He goes, He's, so there may have been a Greg Grumberg connection in there again, you know, which might have led me to get Dawn and Planet of the Apes. So thanks, Greg. I love you. Friends in high places. It sounds it sounds very good. It sounds like you're in a great position though to progress in your career and get yeah. these bigger films that you're looking out for. I mean, actors are always looking for the next best thing. So I mean, the the, the future's open there for you. I mean, yeah. Hopefully, you know, better opportunities will come. And I mean, I'm working right now. I, I'm starting. Uh, it's not up on my IMDb yet because we we just done the pilot and it won't start airing till June. But if you go onto my Facebook, you can see a picture. I just uh, had a table read yesterday for Murder in the First. Which will be on TNT, Stephen Bochco and Eric Lodel, Murder Mystery. Uh, Tay Diggs and Kathleen Robertson are the, are the big stars, but we got Richard Schiff from West Wings, amazing. Stephen Weber, Lombardo Boyar. <laughs> um, so I'm pretty excited, and uh, I'm a series regular, and uh, it'll start airing in June on TNT, so it's getting good, thank God. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy for you, man. I mean, I need to add you on Facebook as well straight after this interview. Do it, of That's course. Amazing. Now, I mean, what I wanted to near enough wrap it up with, I mean, straight away, I've heard there's a sequel for the movie, Big Ass Spider. Uh, right. Everyone yeah. mentions it. I've seen all the interviews. I've done my research. But I did notice something towards the end of the movie. Now, a certain thing that I'm go not going to spoil for everybody, but that you know there's something left in the skyscraper. Right. Now, I'm not going to mention, not going to spoil it. But will you okay. think that will be the premise for me? <laughs> That's all I'll give. If they can figure that out, then they're pretty good. <laughs> okay, okay. That that pretty much just wraps it up for me, Lombardo. I mean, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, you really live up to being the most down-to-earth guy that everyone says you are. Um, oh, thank you so much, no man. Problem. I appreciate I, that. I, I, nice I, is the new mean. Yeah, exactly. Get with, get with it, people. <laughs> nice gets you a long way in Hollywood. Uh, you seem to meet a, a few crazy people along the way, but if you're nice enough and stick to your roots, you can go a long way, that's for sure. That's it, Sean. Thank you so much, man. And yeah, I don't think it's going to be what you saw at the end of the movie, because I mean, I think we'll just, if it was that, we'd probably just make a big boot. But uh, 
So we're working on what, what actually is going to happen in the sequel and stuff. So I'll keep you tuned in, bro. Okay, looking forward to it, buddy. All right, thanks once again for joining me. And uh, I'll definitely look forward to all the upcoming films. Dawn and the Planet to the Apes is definitely one to look for as well. Thanks for joining awesome. us once again, Lombardo. Thanks so much, Sean. I'll see you. Thanks, everybody.